Some big news that broke yesterday. CEO and founder of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, will be stepping down as CEO of the company. He will be transferring that role over to the CEO of Amazon Web Services, which is the bulk of Amazon's revenue and basically floats the rest of the entire company. But this is a really big deal, Crystal, for a lot of reasons. I think it is a recognition by Bezos that the winds of the populist, you know, t- tides are coming. Uh, he basically is doing what Larry, uh, Sergey and Larry did at yeah. Google, where they stepped down, kept the vast majority of their net worth, and then Eric Schmidt as well all decided they were like, hey, I really don't like testifying in front of Congress. So they stepped down from that role. They become like executive chairman. And now Sundar Pichai, who is basically a very highly paid fall guy, has to go and like <laughs> sit in front of, he's like a hundred millionaire who gets to, has to go and sit in front of Congress and be like, Congressman, this is how Google works. You <laughs> type something into it. Uh, but it's, it's, it's really smart, I have to say. I'm not saying I, like, I respect it because he can see where politics is going. He's like, yeah, my role as the richest man in the world and as CEO of Amazon means that I'm getting a ton of scrutiny. And when you are CEO of a publicly traded company, you have all sorts of fiduciary responsibilities. You have to answer calls by stock, you know, on the stock analysts, quarterly investments and all that. And it doesn't really want to be responsible for that anymore. So he's like, yeah, I'm just going to focus on like going to space the Washington Post. I feel like we don't talk enough about how the world's richest man owns the Washington Post, but Everyone's whatever. just sort of accepted that. Yeah, they're like, like oh, it's, it's fine cool. and normal. Well, the yeah. crazy thing in this town is everyone's just like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, they own the Washington Post. I'm like, are you, you don't see anything no wrong with that? No conflicts of it. Like, whatever. you know, they want Pentagon contracts. Yes, right. I mean, it'd be one thing if he's just like a rich philanthropist yes. with no interest in anything, but he has like interest in almost every sector of our society and he's, economy. He's <laughs> building his second headquarters here in Virginia, Crystal City, Virginia. Virginia across Mm -hmm. the river. They're about to transform the entire real estate market of downtown Washington. So there are so many different things that are going on here. And it is a it really is a seismic event in business. And it shows again. Bezos knows exactly what is coming, is that some, maybe not in the Biden administration, but sometime in the next 10 years, there will be an antitrust hearing about Amazon. At the very least, he would be required on several occasions to come before Congress. And he's like, yeah, you know, I don't want to do it. Instead, I'll have my journalists at the Washington Post write about whoever it is that comes to replace me. And I will be sitting pretty, I actually walk past Jeff Bezos' house sometimes. It's like three houses that they fuse into one, largest in the city of Washington. I do uh, always kind like of wonder, know. like, why people stay as long as they do in yeah. these positions. Well, they're narcissists. I mean, he founded the company. Right. And I, he yeah. is not only facing scrutiny here, but p- perhaps more significant scrutiny overseas in Europe, oh, yeah. you know, where they actually, their government still does things mm-hmm. and like <laughs> regulates things. Um, so yeah, he doesn't want to deal with the headaches anymore and uh, have that whole accountability situation, can't have that and him having to directly deal with it. Um, at the same time, this is extraordinarily significant. We've been covering the story yes. really closely. So there's a group, um, a, a fairly large number of Amazon warehouse workers down in Alabama who are trying to organize a union. And that election is set to start, they're set to start voting, I believe, next month. So this is really coming. And Amazon has been virulently anti-union, extraordinarily aggressive. You know, we've covered here the way that they have they have heat maps to make sure that like any Whole Foods location, of course, mm-hmm. Amazon owns Whole Foods now, that has workers who may be interested in labor unions, that they make sure they they crack down and keep anything from starting. We've covered here how they've hired literal Pinkerton goons, how they've hired internal spies to like sniff out if there was any sort of union organizing going on. And this is just the latest tactic um, that's being reported now. And this, by the way, very unfortunately, extraordinarily common um, that corporations, when they have workers who are trying to unionize, they do, they call them information sessions. Yes. And it's just a bunch of completely anti union propaganda. Um, and that's, you know, that's what they're doing here. The workers are saying it's thinly veiled anti union propaganda, thinly veiled as factual information. Uh, Amazon is beating us over the head with these facts in such a one-sided way, very clear that they're anti-union. The company says about the information sessions that we will help employees understand the facts of joining a union. If the union vote passes, it will impact everyone at the site, and it's important associates understand what that means for them in their day-to-day life working at Amazon. Oftentimes, within these types of information sessions, there'll be sort of thinly veiled threats about 
well, we may not, this warehouse location just might not be profitable anymore. So gee, I don't know if we're gonna be able to maintain these kinds of jobs. All of this sorts of sort of misinformation and bullying tactics is used. And the fact that it's allowed in this way is part of why you have such low rates of union density in this country at this point. The fact that this even has a shot of success at this Amazon location, I can't tell you what a huge deal this ultimately is. They have uphill odds in Alabama, you know, mm-hmm. right to work state in the South with Amazon, everything stacked against them. But if they can prevail here, it's it's a really, really positive, important indication. And this is ultimately Bezos's legacy. Look, I think Bezos is a genius. He set up one of the world's most innovative companies. But the cost of that is uh, hundreds of thousands of automatons, essentially, who are treated as less than human and whose company has worked to make sure that they don't unionize, who's resisted wage you know, price increases for years and for many times has used its lobbying power in order to maintain you know, its position in America. And I think that we have to understand there's so much lionization in America of Jeff Bezos and of our world titans and in some respects you know it's true what he did was incredible and he was a visionary whenever he did it but this there's also a cost to much of the market cap of amazon and we should discuss and think about what that means for us as a society when you think about downwardly mobile towns and places in america if the only place you can get a job is an amazon warehouse walking 15 miles a day where every step tracked and getting text messages that you haven't been working enough i think that's inhumane and we got to do something about it and that's just has to be much more of the discussion so i think it's very fitting that this news happens on the same day that he announces that he's going to be leaving amazon or stepping down as ceo of amazon Tomorrow on Rising, we're going to have Don Calloway. Gabby Orr will be here as Team Rising. That's right. And Mohamed Yunus, he's going to join us to break down some latest Gallup polling. Always like hearing from him. Remember to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. Don't forget to like and share as well. And we will see you all tomorrow. Have a good one, guys.